Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're gonna be going over the 15 tools I think you should have before you start your first day on the job as an apprentice electrician. I will also be including prices to all of these tools so that way you have an idea of how much money you need to invest before you start your first day of work. As always, if you could please like this video and hit that subscribe button, it will greatly help me continue to make videos such as these. Okay, before we get started, there's a couple of things I wanna point out to everybody. The first thing I wanna point out is the tools I'll be suggesting will all be professional grade tools. Um, they may not be the most expensive or like the complete highest quality that absolutely money can buy, but um, they'll definitely last you a long time and they will be quality. Uh, don't buy cheap tools. Not only will they break on you, but you will also be judged by your crew and potentially outcast uh, from the group as a goober who just buys all their tools from Harbor Freight or just grab them from mom and dad's junk drawer at home. Um, you're not a do-it-yourselfer, you're a professional and uh, need tools suited for professionals. The second thing I wanna point out to everybody is the very least thing an apprentice electrician can do is have all the right tools to do the job. Okay, having been a foreman and running projects myself, um, even if you are completely inexperienced as an electrician, it made it a hundred times worse by not having any tools um, to work um, and having to constantly go up to your journeymen or fellow apprentices to ask to borrow tools. Um, it's not just your foreman or your journeyman who will be upset by this. It'll also be your peers, your fellow apprentices. So if you take yourself seriously, you got some self-respect um, and you want to get it to work on the right foot, uh, pretty please uh, have these tools ready to go before you start your first day. All right, let's get to the first tool. First on the list is a wire stripper. If you're going to be doing any kind of work as an electrician, it isn't unreasonable to suspect that there may be wires involved. Um, in order to properly terminate wire, you need to be able to remove the insulation on your conductors, which can be achieved using a wire stripper. My suggestion to what brand and model would be the ideal reflex stripper. Um, they typically come with yellow handles. They'll run you about $20. Another thing is these wire strippers will include, uh, other than the holes to strip the wire themselves, will be a cutting blade as well as two holes to cut down the threads on your 632 and 832 machine screws. Number two on the list is the lineman's pliers. This is the go-to pliers when it comes to splicing wires or twisting wires together. Uh, the lineman's pliers is also used to cut cable and wire with the blade as well as grabbing fish tape when pulling wire. Uh, the pliers has a nose at the end of it that can be used for a general purpose plier besides uh, your regular wire twisting duties. They are long so that way they have good leverage to twist and pull wire all day long. Um, I'm suggesting the Klein lineman pliers with the plain Jane grips which will cost around $35. Okay, third on the list is screwdrivers. Now, you could buy four screwdrivers at $10 a piece, or you could buy the Klein 11-in-1 screwdriver for $20, which will include the four screwdrivers that is a must-have for electricians. Those screwdrivers are the number two Phillips, um, a quarter inch, and a 3 16 flathead, and a number two square. Eventually, you will need more than those four, but you will obtain more tools uh, over time as you get further into the trade. Um, another added bonus of the Klein 11-in-1 is that you'll also have nut drivers that will be usable uh, within these shafts, uh, shafts of the screwdriver. Once again, the price for this screwdriver is around $20. Number four on the list is the diagonal cutting pliers. This is used for cutting and prying mostly. Uh, the nose on this pliers is going to be more pointed so that way you can get finer and closer cuts compared to what you would get from a regular blade on a pliers. Um, a common thing I use this pliers for is to remove staples on Romex cable after uh, they've already been nailed down. My recommendation for a diagonal cutting pliers is the high leverage Knipex which will run around $40. The fifth tool I am demanding apprentice electricians to own 
is some sort of hex key situations. Uh, electricians need hex keys to wrench down on various lugs that we attach wire to. The most common one I see is a hex key set, which looks like a Swiss Army knife for hex keys. You can get this for pretty much any brand and any hardware store. For the hex keys particularly, I'd argue that the quality of the tool isn't quite as important uh, for this as let's say your pliers. For my personal recommendation, I am suggesting the Klein hex key set which will run you around $10. Number six on the list is a claw hammer. Now commercial electricians typically don't carry a hammer on their tool belt because they work with steel studs primarily which requires an impact drill and metal screws to mount our equipment. But residential electricians will use a hammer all day long in some stages of construction. The hammer I am suggesting is the S-Wing uh, 16 ounce claw hammer which will cost you around $25. Number seven on our list today is the torpedo level. If you have to mount any kind of equipment, you don't want your journeyman to bark at you saying, what's the matter with you? Why don't you own a level? Or don't you own a level? It's one of those kind of lines. Owning a level will not only help you answer this question with a positive, as a matter of fact, I do. It may even help you keep your equipment level in the first place and prevent an awkward nagging situation from your journeyman. Levels get used nearly every day as an electrician, so it's an important tool to have. My suggestion for your first buy is a Johnson Torpedo level. Something like this one will cost you around $10. Number eight on the list is a utility knife. My preference is a folding one. Uh, that way you can keep it in your jean pocket easier and always have it on you. Some may prefer the ergonomics of a fixed utility knife that doesn't fold, which is fine. Uh, you will be using your knife every day to open boxes, strip bigger wire, uh, strip sheeting off of cable, what have you. I am suggesting this orange Klein folding utility life knife. I love how flippy this one is uh, for opening. Boom. But uh, be warned and please note that there is no blade storage in this thing, which is a bummer. Um, these knives will run you about $20. Coming in at number nine on my list is a tape measure. Please come to work with a tape measure. It won't take much of an imagination to figure out that every construction worker should own a tape measure. Uh, there will be multiple situations where you will be planning out installations such as lights, outlet switches, and you want to make sure you're consistent at the same height and center in your spaces depending on your application. I've tried various type of tape measures and for my money, the only tape measure on the market is the Stanley Fat Max. One of those will cost you $25. Big number 10 is going to be the tongue and groove pliers, sometimes called pipe pliers. Uh, this will come in handy for nuts and bolts, opening various things, uh, connecting different kinds of fittings, and any kind of pipe work. Similar to the tape measure, for my money, the only pipe wrench on the market is the Knipex Cobra. Um, I have a full review on the Knipex Cobra in a separate video, so check out that link uh, in the description if you're interested. One of the Cobras will run you around $30. If you have your calculator out, so far we have racked up a bill of $235 US dollars. Everything I have mentioned so far is being categorized under the hand tool variety. The last five on the list of my 15 get into more of a testing equipment that I feel is necessary to have even as an apprentice, especially since most of them have to do with safety considering electricity can be dangerous. I'm sure most electricians will agree with my first 10, but I'm curious to see what everyone thinks of my next five for apprentices to have on day one. For number 11, I'm putting down a tool belt. Now, tool belts or tool bags can be controversial sometimes since wearing a tool belt can be synonymous with your work ethic, as in, does he wear his tools all day? What that phrase means is, are they lazy or not? Since a fully loaded tool belt can get up to 20 pounds, uh, but wearing one all day makes for quick, easy access to all of your tools. Uh, I once worked with an electrician apprentice who owned around four tools and no tool belt, and he wouldn't even put them in his pants. He would set them in the middle of the room and then go back and forth and grab them um, all day long. It may not be a huge surprise that he lost uh, his tools a lot, which eventually resulted in him only having the four tools. Um, it also shouldn't be a big surprise that he wasn't very efficient or respected on the job site. Even as a foreman, I always wore my tool belt. 
The reason being is I think it showed solidarity with my crew that I am not better than them, even though I don't work with my tools all day quite like they do. I am personally a believer in electricians should wear tool belts, uh, with the exception of service electricians. In the case of service, an electrician might prefer to work out of a tool bag since there are uh, it's kind of sitting hanging out in one place. Um, for your tool belt, you need two things. You need a place to put your tools and a place to put your materials. My absolute favorite tool belt I have owned for several years is the Boulder Bag Electrician Pouch. Uh, I have a full review of the Boulder Bag and a link down below. One of the Boulder Bag Electrician Tool Pouch or Tool Belt Kit will run you around $150. Coming in at number 12 is a multimeter. Uh, you will be using a multimeter to check current and voltage and continuity um, on a circuit. A meter is typically considered a big expense, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, my personal go-to clamp-on ammeter is a Fluke uh, 323, which you can sometimes get on sale for as low as $130. Um, but I am putting the price of a good meter at $200 for our tally since that is probably closer to what you would pay. Also, note that most, uh, most electricians use a clamp style meter, so you should probably get one of those for your early years as well. The next test instrument at lucky number 13 is a GFCI outlet tester. Not only does this, as the name suggests, test GFCI outlets. I also personally like to use it as a tool to hold my outlet sometimes so I can have a better grip when I'm installing them. They can also be used as a quick way to test if a circuit is on um, since they have these indicator lights here. Another thing I use this for as an apprentice is to check for loose outlets. Our inspector was pretty serious about not wanting loose outlets and had the biggest damn GFCI tester you have ever seen in the world go around in a room in terror and almost wiggling them until they became loose and then would fail our trim out inspection. Our foreman would be in a fit of rage and blame us and make us go through the entire job site and check each outlet to see if it was loose with one of these testers. Um, one of these GFCI testers should cost you around $10. For 14, I am putting a non-contact voltage tester uh, it's also called a tick tester or a chicken stick as the name implies this tool is used to test for the presence of voltage on a circuit and will light up and beat if there is power. Um, I'll just turn this on here quick. I'll grab my lamp cord here so we can tell that there is electricity running through this cord right now. It's just another way of making sure a circuit is de-energized and safe to work with. Uh, the one I own is a Fluke model and they cost around $30. Finally, for number 15, I am putting down an impact drill. Now, if your contractor is the generous type, they may provide power tools for you or give you a tool allowance to cover your initial power tool expense. Uh, so this shouldn't be something that is typically comes out of your pocket. In my area of the world, it would be considered a chump move to buy your own power tools without a tool allowance. Um, when I started out, I didn't work for one of the most generous contractors by any means, but they still provided me with a $300 tool allowance to buy an impact and a drill kit. Um, bottom line is, uh, no matter how you get it, you will need an impact driver every day as an electrician. It is by far the most common power tool that we use. Getting a DeWalt kit with an impact and a drill, a charger and a couple batteries will cost around $150, um, but you also need bit kits and tips, so I am rounding that up to $200. So, if you've made it this far, that brings our grand total to $825 US dollars to start your first day as an apprentice electrician. Um, so that is $235 for the hand tools and $590 for the tool belt and the testing equipment, impact, drill, and that sort of a thing. All right, so the, let's say you don't have $825 to start your first day as an apprentice electrician. The first thing I would sacrifice would be the meter. Now, the reason being is you probably won't be doing any troubleshooting on any circuits your first day on the job or in potentially who you work for, maybe not even the first years as an apprentice. 
Um, I like the idea of using a meter to test for voltage because to me, a meter is more reliable than a little $30 uh, tick tester for seeing whether or not there's voltage or current on a circuit. So um, another thing to mention is that you will need to know how to use a meter as an electrician eventually. So even as an apprentice, if you're not using it, you still need to have one so that way you can learn how to use it as you go. Um, so that's why I think that it still should be a mandatory tool, but gun against my head, I gotta get rid of one. First thing I'm skimping on is the meter. If you exclude the meter, that brings the price down to $625 total. Um, if that is still too much for you, the next thing I would sacrifice would be just the price or the quality of my tool belt. Um, now, you could probably piece something together that isn't necessarily a electrician tool belt like I mentioned for the boulder bags, but you could still find something at your local hardware store to keep your pliers, your screwdrivers, and your materials in and maybe you could allow that budget to be closer to $70 versus $150. So if you exclude the meter, you go a little cheaper on your tool belt, that brings the entry level price to $545 for tools to start your first day as an apprentice electrician. I would not skip on anything more on my list of 15 after the meter and the quality or price of your tool belt. Well, there you have it folks. Uh, my 15 must have tools for day one as an apprentice electrician. If you're still here and haven't done so yet, if you could please like this video as well as subscribe to my channel. If you're an electrician already, if you could please comment down below what was in your tool belt, your first day as an apprentice electrician, how much that cost you and uh, depending on if you're willing to share what year you started as an apprentice electrician. That would be kind of fun to see. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.